Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. And by all accounts, the recently concluded inaugural Caribbean Games in Guadeloupe was a success. The five-day event featured 29 countries represented by around 800 under-23 athletes in seven sporting disciplines. After cancellations in 2009 and 2021, the first edition of the Games this year was one to remember as a source of motivation and inspiration to the Caribbean's youth. Here to look back on the historic Games and the regional bond it fostered is the president of Caribbean Association of National Olympic Committees, Brian Lewis. Welcome, Brian. How are you? Good afternoon. Um, I'm good. I'm good. Um, are you back in Trinidad I'm safely? Good. Yes, I am back in Trinidad safely, but uh, due to head out tomorrow. All right. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Well, now that the Caribbean Games, you know, is done and dusted, it has been an overall success. I've said so myself to my team over and over and over. So I want you to, you know, just reflect on how it went and just give us your assessment of how everything went in Guadeloupe. Awesome. Is the word I, I, will, I will use, um, you know, it, 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 there were so many challenges. Um, you know, we, it, it, we adopted a team against all the odds. Um, there were times over the journey, whether it was COVID-19, the pandemic, um, you know, the withdrawal of the of the track cycling velodrome, the track and field, and the netball facilities that, you know, as I said at the, at the closing ceremony, it was so easy for us to say, no more, no more, no mass, no mass. But, um, the Guadeloupe, the Guadeloupe Local Organizing Committee and the CANOP, we, we pressed on. And um, you know, you go back in the history of these games from 2009, when it was cancelled a few days before the opening ceremony by the then government of Trinidad and Tobago, the loss of credibility since then, etc. So um, for it to finally happen, um, the opening of 29 and 29th of June, it was historic. To see the enthusiasm of the young athletes, the commitment of the volunteers, um, it, it really was awesome. Um, you know, it really showed that unity is our strength and our strength is our unity. And, and where there is a will, there is a way. And if we in the Caribbean, Spanish, Dutch, French and English could unite, um, all things are possible. So this, this, it was just awesome, as I said, because I know it also went beyond just the, this field of play, that it had important um, symbolic, practical, inspirational, motivational elements for the youth and young people of Guadeloupe and the Caribbean. Definitely. You know, you spoke about the enthusiasm of the athletes. Talk to us now a bit about the quality of the competition, because we had a couple of youngsters, you know, breaking their personal best, um, winning medals for the first time. So share with us on that aspect. Of course, and that was, that was absolutely great to see. Um, you know, you had countries like Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Spanish countries, who show through their support behind this and, and delivered quality results. You had across the, the Caribbean, um, you know, Jamaica, um, uh, the various islands. I mean, you know, you look at the metal table and you see that there was a, a spread, but, but there were some, some youngsters that, that just gave it their all. They treated the Caribbean game as an important um, highlight of their young career. And I think that above all was more important. Um, you know, it was very easy for, for some countries um, to maybe be tempted not to take the Caribbean games as serious as they may have other events. Um, I know that there was a lot of inherent obstacles that may have cast doubt in people's minds. There were obstacles related to visas, which I, I personally felt that the French uh, National Olympic Committee and the French government could have done more to assist given Paris 2024. Um, so that, you know, there, were, there was a degree of skepticism and caution and fear. But once the games got going and the opening ceremony was so fantastic, I felt the energy 
of the game, the energy of the athletes, the energy of the coaches, the technical delegates, the Guadalupans, you saw that, that energy change. And uh, it was really inspirational, motivational. The way everyone embraced the reality that we were all in this together and that we were creating history. And um, they really gave it their all. I was tremendously impressed by the athletes and their commitment and dedication to Caribbean regional, regional regionalization and the Caribbean. I know that people feel that athletes should be seen and not heard, but I think these young athletes, by their action, showed and set an example and a benchmark for our we Caribbean games. Yeah, Brian, can I take you back to 2009 when the games had been conceptualized and should have been held in 2009? The inaugural one uh, proposed for Trinidad and Tobago. I know that. Larry Romani would have been president of the TNT Olympic Committee at that time, but I know you were still a high-ranking executive on the TTOC. For the 2009 plans, is what happened in the past week in Guadeloupe similar to what was planned for 2009? Because my recollection is that the 2009 planned event seemed to have been a bigger splash than what we eventually had in, in 2022. It certainly was. Um, it was bigger. It was more ambitious. It was much more expensive. Um, and uh, it was targeted at the best athletes, senior yes. athletes. And it, it had that, that great big ambition and vision yes. for, for, for the Caribbean game. But uh, necessity is a mother of invention. And you have to look for the opportunity in every crisis. And uh, I think that when you look at what happened between the 29th of June and the 3rd of July, um, the fact that the games were seven sports um, under 23, um, you know, you had foot style, you had the introduction of netball, you had 3-3 three -three basketball, um, judo, cycling, track and field and swimming. And esports, let's not forget esports. I think that it set a template. And I think that, as I said, out of the adversity, um, we had to be creative and innovative as the history of the, the Caribbean, whether it would be the steel pan and all the other things that we do. I think that we actually ended up creating a sustainable template. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in 2025 when the, the next host is announced um, in, in, in targeted for November at the Canon General Assembly in Port of Spain, Trinidad. It will be interesting to see what evolves. But I think that what has happened is that we have created a template um, for a sustainable Caribbean game and one that is relevant to the youth and young people in the Caribbean. Yeah, all right. So you said the next games are scheduled for 2025, which is three years from now, but it will eventually be a four-year cycle, won't it be? Or is it Well, three? it was supposed to be a four-year cycle. If you, if you look at, it was supposed to be held in 2021. Yes. But because of COVID-19, the pandemic, it was rescheduled to 2022. So in 2025, it's getting back on the Olympic the, sorry, the cycle, and really it was also targeted for the year, the gap year, as we call it, yes. in terms of the Olympic cycle. Yeah. All right, and, and having said that, um, you did have a very tempered approach to this 2022 Games, and now that you're satisfied uh, with how successful it was, um, you said only seven sports and uh, under 23s. Will this be the template going forward? Or do you, or, or do you look at expansion? If, if, I mean, obviously there's going to be a review and a debrief. Yes. But if I, if, I, if I would say, if, if you ever ask for my opinion, I would say that the next edition certainly should be seven games, maybe eight, maybe nine, but no more than that. Mm -hmm. And the program should be, um, as I said, focused on, on, on the sporting activities that are relevant to the youth and young people of the Caribbean. The, the response to 
Chichi basketball, futsal, esports um, in particular was was incredible. And um, you know, it, it would have been an eye opener to the traditional thinkers in the in the Caribbean Olympic and Commonwealth Sport movement. Um, and in, in many ways it would have been a wake up call. So I think that there's a lot of positives to take out of it. Again, you know, the whole way the village was concept, as I said, there's a big emphasis on sustainability. Of course, it was brought on by the reality of the significant economic challenges and financial challenges that the Guadalupe Olympic Committee under its president, Alan Sorez, and the local organizing committee was faced with. Um, it required Canoc, I have to be able to admit, to really dig deep into its, its modest financial resources. But I think that it was a necessary investment in the youth and young people of, of the Caribbean and, 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 and Guadeloupe and the future of the Caribbean Olympic and Commonwealth Sports Movement and the Caribbean Games. Well, Brian, I want to thank you so much. And I'm looking forward personally for the next edition of the Caribbean Games. Thank you very much. And I must say, um, I don't know if it is not politically good, but you were awesome and you. and you did a fantastic job. And certainly you and Pan Am Sports and um, the companies, forgive me, contributed to a successful um, first ever historic Caribbean game. So thank you very much. Thank you as well. We'll chat again soon. Yeah. Of course, there, Brian Lewis, the president of Canuck. We go to break, Lance. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay, Canuck boss praising Mariah Ramara can it work with the Panam Sports. All my bosses always praise me. We have to go to break. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment. <laughs>